Here we have an Air King in stainless steel. I chose to feature this watch in a video because it has an unusual fault which we don't often see in this movement. The customer brought it to us having never had it serviced. This is something we hear often and the cosmetic condition immediately showed it has not had any maintenance for a long while. There is a lot of dirt and some deep scratches on the bezel. The bracelet is showing a lot of surface wear, but it has also taken on a polished appearance from repeated wear. We will restore the correct brushed finish. The fault shows when using the crown to manually wind the watch. The time setting operates correctly, but as soon as the crown is pushed into position 1 to manually wind the watch, the crown intermittently jams. The customer has also requested that we try to remove this scratch on the front of the watch. The case and bracelet in general could definitely benefit from some attention. This is my favourite bracelet that Rolex produced. I like the way the logo has been cut out of the clasp rather than being raised up. With a little refinishing, it will look as good as new. We'll need to remove the bracelet and open the case to have a closer look at what's causing the fault. Again, we see more dirt held inside the clasp. As a watchmaker you get used to seeing this, but it is usually a sign of things to come. It takes quite some time to build up this level of dirt, and when you see this, the movement is usually dirty too, and the oil's dry. If your watch is properly sealed and watertight, you can clean this easily yourself at home. A little warm water and a toothbrush with some gentle soap would massively improve the appearance. Just make sure your watch has been recently tested and is watertight first. Yet more dirt is inside the end links. It is so impacted that it's hard to compress the spring bar. It's tightly packed in. As well as being unpleasant, the dirt also increases wear to the bracelet. I have seen bracelets very quickly wear out from this, especially if some type of abrasive gets trapped between the links. If you work with angle grinders or carbon ceramic brakes, take your watch off first. Before opening a watch, we tried to remove the dirt from the outside of the case back. This can fall inside the movement when opening and be difficult to remove, so we try to prevent it getting inside the case. Inside is my favourite movement, the 31 series, very reliable and beautifully decorated. A few people mentioned that we often see bearing failures in this movement, so I wanted to be clear. This isn't unique to this movement. Most automatic calibers will have rotor bearing failures. A lot of these watches we feature have been neglected for 20 plus years, and we are showing the worst ones on here as they make more interesting videos. It isn't a particular weakness with Rolex watches and shouldn't put you off owning one. This watch shows the same fault, a new automatic assembly will quickly rectify it. Another reason that we often see this fault is that Rolex movements will run and run for years without fresh oil. This leads them to be left a long while without intervention. Before anyone mentions it, I'm aware that Rolex recommend 10-year service windows. As a watchmaker with a lot of experience, all I can say is that I don't leave my own watches that long without fresh oil or cleaning. When Rolex say this, it stipulates approximately 10 years and that it depends on model and real-life usage, it is not a fixed 10 years. If you are wearing a 3-1 based movement daily, I personally recommend 5-year intervals but each owner can certainly decide for themselves. The scoring on the movement plate shows that the rotor has been impacting the plate. This wouldn't cause the winding fault though.
Despite the faults, the watch is still running, so a pre-service test is possible. The watch is gaining time outside of the acceptable specs, the amplitude is low and the beat error is out of spec too. Moving to the microscope, we can quickly spot the fault that has caused the customer to bring the watch to us. We've removed the automatic mechanism, and the first thing we see is a collection of dirt, where the automatic bearing has been running without oil. As the fault we can feel occurs during winding, we quickly check the winding wheel and can see missing teeth in two places. As we rotate the wheel, a piece of steel from somewhere else in the watch appears in the wheel. This must have become trapped in the winding wheel, causing the damage we can see. We already know that we need a new winding wheel, now we need to find where this piece of metal has come from to find the other part which needs replacement. To do this, we search the movement with the microscope to look for anything unusual. Here's the underside of the automatic assembly. You can see that a pinion tooth has snapped. This is our mystery piece of steel that has caused the damage. We now know that the watch will need a winding wheel, an automatic assembly, and a service to restore good working order. New seals and a mainspring will also be required. The other part of this service which I want to show is the removal of the scratch mentioned earlier. We do this by mounting the part to a wax chuck in an 8mm lathe. This allows us to polish uniformly so we don't cause any low spots. The part needs to be reasonably concentric to ensure a good finish. We use the same lathe with roll sanders to work on the bracelet as usual. Here I am fitting the new winding wheel. The old and new automatic assemblies are shown here, on the top right of the sheet of paper. This is how we oil the watch's balanced jewels. The inker block spring is carefully removed so we can access the two jewels on the top of the balance. We then separate these and put fresh oil between them before refitting the jewels and spring. The part you can see here is the balance staff pivot. This part needs to be extremely thin to reduce friction. This part of the watch train is high speed, low torque, which means any excess friction easily stops the watch. As a result, the parts are very fine and delicate. This is why the Inca block system is required to absorb shocks. The movement service is almost complete. The new winding wheel has restored the manual winding function, which now feels smooth. The case and bracelet look much better and the watch is ready for many more years of use, hopefully with more regular service intervals. We apply sealing grease to the case tube and case back seal 
to ensure the watch is water resistant. Before fitting the automatic mechanism and final casing, I like to check that every screw is fully tightened. If not, they can work loose over time and cause issues. Now it's time for pressure testing. We always use a wet tester for the most accurate result. A failure would be a continuous stream of bubbles, leaving the case as we put it into the water. If this happens, the watch is quickly withdrawn to prevent water entering the case. We also carry out this same test earlier in the process with the case empty to ensure it is in good order. Thanks for watching to the end and supporting the channel. I've uploaded three services quite quickly over the last few days to get back into making videos. Now, I will work on a few more in-depth projects. We still have the badly fire damaged Rolex to come up soon. That one is proving to be quite a challenge. Also a rare double sign Vacheron retailed by Cartier which a jeweler badly destroyed to scrap the gold before we intervened. A very rare 1930s Patek, which had the gold case scrapped in the 1950s. A constellation which was found in the street, and a nice Omega Deville from 1968, which is a full set which needs some TLC. Thanks again, and see you soon.